Hey, it's Michael. Thanks for being here with me today on the Fast 5 Minutes with the Cogent Coach. Today we're going to talk about how to talk about your business without sounding like a used car salesperson. So it's a quick five minutes on how to talk about your business and why that's important. So remember the elevator pitch? That delightful thing where you were told to have a 30 second description of your business and be able to prepare it and blurt it out at anyone who uh, unfortunately came within your reach? Don't do that. Unless you're trying to pitch a new company to an investor, in which case it might be something that's still useful, it comes off as very preachy. There's no room for a response from whoever you're talking from because you're still getting out that thing that you memorized. There's no room for you to listen to anything that they might have to say. And it's all about you, and nobody likes that. So don't do this. Instead, let's look at how we should talk about our businesses. So we want this to be more like a dialogue. And unlike a movie or a television show where we can script out the back and forth, really we only control our part of that dialogue. And if we're going to actually listen, then we really only can control the exact thing that comes out of our mouth the very first time we speak. And from then on, it needs to be a good back and forth and you need to have prepared and thought out what it is that you provide that's worth paying money for and who it's for. So a great lead is just to think about, I help, who, you, who do you help, with their, the biggest challenge you solve so that the major outcome you provide um, so if you were a company that helped small businesses market, you could say something like, I help business owners market their businesses so that they can grow and scale without stress. That's a really bad example, but it's just off the top of my head. But you see the difference between I have a marketing company and what I just said. Even though what I just said as the example is really poor, it's not thought out, you can see it's already immeasurably better than the first one. If you say, I have a marketing business, then whoever you're talking to is going to define what that means in the sense of your conversation. So, you know, they may be someone who exports dog food to Kazakhstan through a drop shipper in Sweden, uh, and you may be someone who is very focused on helping local businesses market, and yet with an intro like that, you both can assume that you're perfect for each other, or at least explore a little bit further, and you can find yourself wasting your time, wasting their time, um, and you can think you've got a great lead, and then you find out as you start to ask questions that you know this isn't the person for you. So this helps you quickly find out who you should be talking to, and this is works digitally as well as in person. It also will help people self-select away from you. you know, if you talk about how you help local business owners. You know, take advantage of digital marketing so that they can you know, blast their sales you know, uh, into their community and on a drop of a hat or something. Um, again, bad example, but then someone who's exporting dog food to Kazakhstan quickly knows that's not for them and you're not right for each other. Uh, if you're doing online marketing, which should be a component of your marketing, then if you're able to say clearly this type of you know, opening salvo, then people will come to your site. Remember, you have about eight seconds before people leave. And so people will come to your site, they'll see this and they'll say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna read a little bit more. The next gate is you have about 30 seconds in where someone decides if they're gonna stay any further. And so this will help you get to that 30 second point and then it's your content and, and whatever else is on your site that has to carry that conversation forward. And then you can engage in a dialogue through, for instance, an autoresponder, but you keep going. So this methodology works online and in person. And one thing you want to be aware of is don't say your profession, your job title, etc. Again, that lets others decide who you are and what you do, and it lumps you in as a commodity. If you say, I'm a plumber, well, now you're one of a thousand, you know, in a bigger city, for instance, and that's nothing special. But if you're, you know, say, I help homeowners, um, you know, keep their basements dry in, in some unique way, well, that might set you apart from, from everyone else and give you the chance one for that person to say, yeah, that's me. Or the other thing that can happen is someone will say, hmm, that's not me, but I know someone that I think that would be good for. So why is this important? It's important, again, we covered a lot of these, so that the right people connect with you, the wrong people don't engage you, 
which is important because it wastes both of your times. And you also don't want to have a customer who's not right for you. Um, in order to have clear marketing, this will really help you figure out who you're going to market to, how you're going to market to them. So you know who your market is. It provides a clear impression online. You don't want to come to a site and really have to try and work to figure out what it is. And it creates the foundation for a discussion, which is important because it's discussions, whether they're digital or online, that typically lead to a sale. And so you're prepared to talk about what you do without sounding dull, confusing, or flippant. You're not making it up on the spot. You're not trying to guess who they are and say something to it, or you're not sounding rote like, oh, plumber. You know, you're, you're having a conversation that starts with something really clear about who you help, the benefit you provide, and why that outcome is important. So this was the Fast Five on talking about your business. We learned how to talk about your business, and we discussed why it's important. And I've made a list of my favorite marketing tools. Some of the best ones are free, and some of the free ones will really help you drill down into who your market is. And a lot more information about that market becomes available to you with a, a little bit of digging, and that's free. You can grab a copy of that uh, report by clicking the link below, or it might be beside the video, or you can visit my site at thecogentcoach.com. So thank you for being here with me today. Wishing you peace and prosperity. Michael here. Talk to you later.